Hello people, I'm Ginny Metherill and I'm a fourth and generation witch. Today I want to talk all about spell bottles because quite frankly they are the most charming of spells that you can give people and I really enjoy creating them. I want to give you some of my recipes, discuss how, why and where you might use spell bottles, the advantages of them, the disadvantages of them and how you can put your own spin on each of your individual spell bottles. So today there's spell bottles for everyone, including baby witches. Now, spell bottles are old fashioned charms, essentially. You used to find them stuck up chimneys in Devon cottages because they were there mainly as a protective element and they were called witches' bottles. And a spell bottle is essentially the old fashioned witches' bottle that you might find in a museum or found up a chimney and modernised for today's use. I love spell bottles, I find them really easy and beautiful things to create and they work well with my particular witchy energy. So for today's video I'm going to do three different types of spell bottles. I'm going to do a spell for money, I'm going to do a spell bottle for love and I'm going to do a spell bottle for luck and success. Now these are three things that we might need an injection of very quickly at any given time. And I like to put them under my bed because that's a particularly good place for them to exude their magic. You can absorb the magic whilst you sleep. So the first thing you need to know about spell bottles is whether you're going to be good at them. And the simple answer to this is to work out if you're drawn to them. Do you like them? Are you intrigued by them? Do you want to make them? Therefore, you are drawn to them if the answer to all these questions is yes. Even if it's yes to some of them, you're going to probably be pretty good at a spell bottle. They are the sort of basic witch's trick for everybody. And that's why I particularly like them. Easy, portable and useful. Now there are a variety of different spells bottles. If you look on YouTube, you'll find thousands of recipes for varying spell bottles. In fact, I've done lots myself for money or protection or health, or I can't remember what they are. Have a look at my videos. I'll put a link up here for my last spell bottle video, which I think is for protection. Unsure, can't remember. So now we've worked out that you can do a spell bottle, why would you want to do one? Well, of course, you would always want to do a spell bottle to encase a charm and make it portable, meaning that you can give it to people or you can grab it when it's needed. For example, I often produce spell bottles for my car because I am rubbish at driving. I tend to look at the hedges, look at the animals, look at the sky. I look anywhere but at the bloody road. And so I'm not the world's greatest driver However, fingers crossed, I use a lot of spell bottles for protection and safety in my car. You might want to add different things to your spell bottle depending on how you feel. And it doesn't really matter. As long as you feel that they are right for that particular spell, put it in. The only thing I would say beware of is putting in too much. And that's why the smaller the spell bottle, the better it can be. If you add too many ingredients to a spell bottle, it can become overworked and the ingredients will fight each other and not come together as they should and provide the perfect spell. So you need to really limit your ingredients in each spell bottle. And I would suggest three being the magic number is a perfectly good amount. Any more and you do risk ruining the spell by over complicating it. Never over complicate your spells. You don't need to. Now, spell bottles have a shelf life and people don't realise this, and but they do run out. Once you have put your spell together and you've crafted it and you've kept your spell inside your spell bottle, if you give it to someone to use and they hang it around their neck, for example, on a chain, lovely, very pretty, do appreciate, then this means that their body is drawing the energy from that spell and they will deplete that energy, depending on how much you've put in there, from helping them. 
And so there is a shelf life to spell bottles. In the olden days, traditional witches would reinvigorate their um, spell bottles or pouches or poppets or whatever they're given their clients every year in the spring because this is when the sap is rising and you, it's very easy to add back the energy in, especially to ingredients that are already there. So your spell bottle is going to run out at some point, depending on how much energy you take out of it, how much of the spell you're using from it. So you need to know when to reinvigorate. If you, do, I mean, I know simply by holding the spell bottle in my hand and feeling its energy through that connection. However, you might not be quite so adept at this particular way of divining whether your spell has got anything magical left in it. And so I would ask um, any divining capability that you might have. So for a card, so you could draw a card and see if that tells you whether there's any spell work left or use your pendulum if you have one. Cast it over the spell bottle and see if it works. So beware, they don't last forever. So a few years ago, I gave up smoking and I used a spell to do so. And I infused a charm with a, an anti-addiction or anti-smoking spell. And this charm ran out after I'd used it, I think eight times, I had to reinvigorate it because I was pulling such a lot of energy out of that charm. Same with the spell bottle. Say, for example, this is a love spell and you're about to go out and find a partner of your choice. You would hold your spell bottle in your hand and take the energy out of it if it is a love spell for you. And finally, the last thing I would say about spell bottles is beware. The ingredients do go off and to dispose of them well, I would suggest taking them apart. Now, you might not want to do that if the ingredients have gone off and it's covered in gosh knows what. So just bear that in mind because the best way to dispose of a spell bottle is simply to pull it apart, to pour away the ingredients into appropriate places and then you can get rid or reuse the spell bottle itself. So with all that said, let's crack on. Firstly, I always love to light a few candles when I'm working, only because I love a candle. I'm also lighting my charcoal burner to help purify my working area. Every bottle that you use should be cleansed with smoke and this ensures that any negative energy that is surrounding or on the bottle is taken from it and won't affect your spell. And I'm using Paolo Santo Joss Sticks. This first spell bottle I'm going to do for success and luck and as a result my very first ingredient is going to be some salt. I have a banknote here. Banknotes are brilliant for prosperity and success spells and so if you just fold the banknote up and place it within the jar this is a perfect spell ingredient. However, you might not have a spare banknote to hand. And so I would recommend using a bay leaf. Other great ingredients for success and luck are clothes, mint, red clover, and the wonderful chamomile. However, for this spell, I'm going to write my intent upon this bay leaf. And I'm requiring prosperity. Roll the bay leaf up tight and place in your bottle. My third and final ingredient is cinnamon. Cinnamon works particularly well with bay leaves and is well known for its success and luck properties. Placing my bottle on a heatproof surface, I'm now going to seal it with wax and I'm using colour magic with red because red is success and luck. 
Finally, I'm going to use some gold wire to make a hoop to attach it to the bottle for hanging. Next up is a love spell, and for this I'm going to cleanse it with lavender, which is a herb of love. Starting with a base layer of pink salt, bringing in a little more colour magic, because pink, of course, is associated with the heart. I'm dropping quite a lot of this here, so forgive me, I'll just clear up, I think. I'm using salt again because it restops any negative side effects of a negative love, for example jealousy, from coming in and so this will help protect me. The second ingredient is rosemary, which of course helps you bind your love together. And I'm using flowers and stems. But perhaps you want to use some violets. Apples are also deeply associated with love and passion. Or you might care to use the classic dried rose petals. I have placed my rosemary in the vase and added another layer of salt. Because these ingredients are fresh, the salt will help preserve it, so I'm surrounding them with it. I'm going to add a little bit of lavender essential oil, as well as some to my burner whilst creating this spell. And I'm going to seal it, of course, with a pink candle. I am adding a hoop made with silver foil for this one, and then it is complete. And for my final spell jar, I'm going to do a money spell. Again, a quick cleanse. A base layer of salt. This stops any negative money energy coming into my spell. And my second ingredient are cloves. Great for instant wealth. Other herbs to try are bay trees, basil and dandelion. I'm going to do double salt for this money jar because money is a very low energy and if you attract it to you, you can attract other low energy items too. And finally, I'm adding some chips off this crystal that I picked up at the beach. I think it's a type of rose quartz, but it's very crumbly. You could add any crystal that you choose. Jade works particularly well. And thank you, Sophie, for telling me. And finally, sealing it with, of course, green. Green is the colour of money. They're all now ready to go out and bring in their magic. Um... I would love to know what you are going to put in your spell bottle. Can you leave me a comment below on what you would use them for? Because it's really interesting to me to find out what other witches use in their spell bottles so I can learn from them. So do leave me a comment below with what you're going to do. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check me out on Patreon because we have cover meetings and all sorts of other excitements going on there. It is a thrilling ride. Check me out. Otherwise, do please like and subscribe and I will see you in a few days. <laughs>